philosophy at Inform Fitness is uh, about strength training. I feel that building muscle, strengthening muscle as we get older, is the key to our fitness. I don't think we need to do endless amounts of cardio to improve our fitness. I want to say that before I do this presentation so you know where I'm coming from. This is not a pro aerobic exercise talk. This is about deconstructing the whole philosophy of aerobic exercise and what it is now, what it started as, and why it all still comes back. If you're talking about our fitness, it still comes back to building muscle and strengthening our bodies. This may be good news for some of us, the fact that you might not have to do the hours of cardio that you told you have to do. It might be bad news for some of us who enjoy the cardio. Uh, I'm going to put everything in perspective for us. So, can people in the back hear him well enough? Everyone hear me? Clearly. Okay. Barely? Who's there? No, Barely? Clearly. Clearly. <laughs> That's better. When I was in high school, I used to be called Marble Now. <laughs> people thought I spoke with Marble. Anyway, okay, so if you can't even please speak up, I want this to be very informal and very casual. All right, so uh, what is cardio? Also known as aerobics. These are interchangeable terms. When we hear cardiovascular exercise, we hear aerobics, we're thinking the same thing. So, who wants to tell me what cardio aerobics is? What's the definition of cardio aerobics? Anyone want to take a stab at that? Getting your heartbeat up. Getting your heartbeat up. Very good. What else? Is that it? I mean, okay, for example, if, if, if it's getting your heartbeat up, which is part of the cardio equation definition, that means then that if I drank coffee and sat in a hot tub, I'm doing cardio, because I can tell you if I did that, my heart rate would go right up. All right. So the definition has to be a little bit better, but that is the primary definition of cardio, getting a heart rate. For what purpose? Why are we getting a heart rate up? What is the purpose of cardio? Burn fat. Burn fat. What else? Oxygenate the blood. Oxygenate the blood. Whatever. Why are we doing cardio? I mean, let's, 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 we're talking about something that every single media source when they talk about fitness and exercise tells you you need to do you need to do cardio to do this to do this what i mean lower blood pressure lower blood pressure burn fat burn fat strengthening your heart muscles strengthening your heart muscles exactly so we're told that you can't just do strength training what are you doing for your heart what are you doing to lose weight that's good for your muscles but what about your heart your heart's a muscle blah 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 all right, so cardio, the conventional definition of cardio is to strengthen your heart, to build endurance, and to burn calories, all right, to, to lose weight. That's endurance question. Endurance. What is endurance? The ability to last longer at something that's not so easy to do. All right, walking up a flight of stairs to the subway. All right, if that becomes easier over time, you've built up endurance. Basically, aerobics is centered on improving our cardiovascular system, improving the heart. And because cardiovascular activity makes the heart pump faster, it's a logical thought that if you do an activity that's going to make your heart pump very fast, it's going to improve your heart strength. Back in the 60s, I was born, I'm the last baby boomer born. I was born in 1964. Prior to 1964, up to 64, that's when the baby boomers were born. Any baby boomers in the room? <laughs> All right. um, great decade for a lot of reasons. There was something else born in the 60s, and that was cardiovascular exercise, otherwise known as aerobics. I don't know if you know this, but before 1968, I believe the year was, the word aerobics didn't exist as a form of exercise. No one talked, no one knew what that was. But then this guy named Dr. Kenneth Cooper came along, all right, and he started realizing that when people started jogging, that certain markers for health started to go up, started to improve, mainly endurance, and something called oxygen uptake, the ability to take in more oxygen for a given task. So if you can do a task and take up more oxygen, you're technically, according to the test that they gave you, you're more aerobically fit. Well, like us baby boomers, uh, 
aerobics theory is starting to show its age. <laughs> and the philosophy behind it is starting to become like this old creaking edifice. It's starting to break down. Now, what Kenneth Cooper, now bear with me for a second. I'm, I, I, believe me, I kept the biology in this to a bare, bare minimum, and this is it. Dr. Kenneth Cooper was saying on a molecular level why the activity of cardio exercise is so good is because, whoops, is because, I'm pushing the wrong button, because, see these jelly bean looking things, these yellow corn kernels? Those are called mitochondria. Mitochondria, if this was a car, mitochondria would be the engine of the car, be where you get all your power and your energy from. Every cell in our body has these mitochondria, some more than others, but basically every cell needs energy to do its function, do its job. And it's the mitochondria that is the primary source of that energy. Now the reason I'm talking about these mitochondria is when Kenneth Cooper noticed people building more endurance, and because they were breathing in a lot more oxygen as a result of that endurance, and because mitochondria use oxygen to produce energy, he figured, since you're building endurance, and since it's the cardiovascular system that brings that oxygen to the mitochondria, that as your endurance improves, your cardiovascular system will improve. And the reason he called it aerobics is because this mitochondria, because it uses oxygen to give you that energy, is called aerobic metabolism. So Dr. Kenneth Cooper felt that if you want to improve your fitness, that you need to improve these mitochondria, that you can isolate these mitochondria's function by doing a particular activity called cardio, or aerobics, the jogging for the most part. Okay. Now, before I move on, there's also <coughs> other energy systems in the cell. It's not just the mitochondria, by the way, that gives us this energy. There's also another energy system that doesn't use oxygen, that also gives our cells energy. That's called anaerobic metabolism. Anaerobic, A-N, the root word an, or prefix an, is without aerobic. Aerobic meaning with oxygen. All right, that was all the biology, I promise. To understand the function of the cardiovascular <coughs> system is to really, uh, it's not so much about understanding biology, as there, it is about understanding supply and demand. I'm gonna use an analogy. When a bunch of people move down to a new neighborhood, like I did when I moved out to the financial district not too, not too long after 9-11. I was one of the few residents that lived down there. And then within three, four years, 40,000 people literally moved down to the financial district. When I first moved down there, there were no dry cleaners, not too many restaurants, no grocery stores. It was kind of tough after five o'clock at night to get anything accomplished. I liked the quiet, but again, again, it was inconvenient. But when all those people moved back down there, well, next thing you know, the supermarkets came in, the delis came in, the support services for the demands. So in other words, there was demand for services, and those demands were met. People started coming down there, the restaurants started opening up, et cetera, et cetera. Conversely, if GM leaves Detroit, you have this. The people aren't there anymore, therefore, all the services go away. And why, this, why is this analogy important? What I'm trying to say is the cardiovascular system, just like the dry cleaners and the restaurants and everything like that, they support the demands of muscle. Without the demands of muscle, you don't have a need for these things. Bone density, cardiovascular efficiency, pulmonary function, and I could have put another 16 support functions, neurological efficiency. I could have put a whole bunch of stuff along the top line. They all improve if muscle improves because it is the demand of the muscles that is affecting what happens to these support services, just like an economy in downtown Manhattan. I have that the cells back. It's lingering around, biology's lingering around over here. All right, when we're sitting around the room doing what we're doing right now, or we're gardening, or even going for a light jog, all right, our little corn kernels over here, our mitochondria over here, are just churning out energy for us. No big deal. You're not pushing the systems anymore. You can you can jog, you know, a lot of people, you know, at a very light pace. You know, think about walking, for example. You know, you can walk for hours and hours. Unless you're in a museum and you've kind of for some reason you feel tired in five minutes. 
There's something weird about museums, but other than museums, all right, you can walk around for a long time and you are not really pushing your energy systems too much. And these uh, mitochondria are working fine, all right? But when the demand becomes much more so, and what is, what is, what is the difference between high demand and low demand? It's what the muscles are doing. It's the demand of the muscles, once again. And when the muscles are working, requiring a high energy demand, not only are they asking the mitochondria to work at their full function, but they're also asking all the other, other energy systems of the cell to work at their maximum function. Now that's where the progress starts coming. That's where we start getting more fit. If we just go for light jogs for hours and hours, maybe there'll be some kind of effect on the muscle, therefore improving some of these markers. That's what Kenneth Cooper found when he was having his clients jog for two miles at a light pace, four miles at a light pace. He'd see some improvements in their cardiovascular function and their endurance. But they had to spend four, five, six hours of, of these kind of activities, jogging anyway, to actually start to appreciate those benefits. But when demand is more, now we're pushing the mitochondria, we're pushing the anaerobic system. And when the anaerobic system is being pushed a lot, what happens? Why do we have to stop after we're sprinting for a long time? The lactic acid builds up, right? That lactic acid is what fuels that lactic acid is what fuels the oxygen and this thing called pyruvate. In other words, when you're doing a lot of weight training, you're producing lactic acid. It's that lactic acid that goes into the mitochondria with oxygen to give you the energy that you need. So they're very interconnected, the anaerobic system and the aerobic system. And you can't isolate them the way Dr. Kenneth Cooper thought you could. They're very interrelated. There was a study done. It's called the McMaster study. This is what they did in the McMaster study. They wanted to see if you really needed to do hours and hours of cardio to really build endurance. So what they did is they took 16 people and they hooked up these oxygen masks to them to measure their output of oxygen after they were asked to ride as fast as they can about 18 miles on this bicycle. So they all asked to go as fast as you can, all 18 of these people asked to go as fast as you can for 18 miles and they, were, and they measured their oxygen uptake and how fast they were able to do it. They recorded all that. Then they took those 16 people after they did it, and they split them into two groups. One group did high intensity sprint training, where they went all out on this bicycle for like two or three minutes, rested for a minute, went all out again, and did that about four or five times. And they did that for twice a week three, for three weeks. The other group, the other eight people, what they did was they just spent hours on the bicycle, like you would normally do on a bicycle. Nothing intense at all. But for about an hour to two hours a day, three times a week, they did the steady state training. Basically low intensity cardio, which is what we're told we need to do to build endurance. Well, the findings were amazing. What ended up happening when they were tested again, so after the three weeks are up, they tested them again, they told them to all sprint as fast as they can, 18 miles, and see what happens. Well, the sprint group, who spent six to nine minutes per week of exercise, had an increase of their oxygen uptake that low. Group B, who spent four and a half to six hours a week doing the steady state activity, their oxygen uptake improved no more or less. Is anyone blown away by this fact? Yeah. This should be front cover of the Science Times. It should be, honestly. It wasn't. Nobody knows about this stuff. It's been repeated several times by different universities. What this is saying, what this is saying is that you can improve your endurance by nine minutes of intense work as opposed to hours of submaximal work. They didn't only just test the oxygen uptake of these individuals, they also tested the enzymes. They also tested the enzymes in the mitochondria. Now, if you have more endurance, your mitochondria are going to have certain aerobic enzymes increasing. Well, again, the steady state group, their enzymes went up after six hours a week's work. But the enzymes, specifically citrate synthase, big deal, that went up too on the, on the high intensity group. These are, our, these are our aerobic enzymes. These aren't anaerobic enzymes. These are the enzymes that are told that you need to improve to improve your endurance. Well, they went just as high on the six to nine minutes of workout. So what's the key to this? 
What ends up being the key to aerobic endurance and capacity? Building muscle, like I was telling you before about supply and demand. The difference between steady state activities and demands of steady state, steady state activities and, and interval training or high intensity exercise is the demands that are being placed by the muscles. Now this is really interesting. Not too long ago, I actually had this slide on my last presentation. Uh, AJ Jacobs, a good writer for Esquire magazine, actually he only works out of my gym actually. He, he this is this interval training, this this high speed interval training that I showed you on those bicycles, but not done with weights, but done either high intensity sprint training on running or on a bicycle. It showed that intense spurts, intense spurts of exertion improve cardiorespiratory fitness. It changes your body weight at the slow and steady approach, the steady state activities that everyone's told to do. Does it? It alters muscle structure, increases enzyme activity. I just talked about that enzyme activity, and it boosts your metabolism. We're talking this high intensity stuff. He's talking about the same thing that that McMaster study did. Nine minutes of intense cardio, quote unquote cardio. All right, it's much more anaerobic than it is cardio when you're doing it like sprints. But it, you know, it's it's the key is intent. I keep getting back to it. The key is the intensity. Now this is the disconnect. This is the problem I have with cardiovascular exercise as the activity itself. This is from the American Heart Association. Risk of muscular skeletal injuries increases as the intensity increases. Well, I was just talking to you about how intensity is really important. Now everybody's coming to that conclusion. Even Kenneth Cooper himself, who didn't realize that intensity had anything to do with it as long as he did the activity long enough. Even he, many years later, in his new book called The New Aerobics, all right, many years later, said that the difference between steady state activity and, and faster runs is the effort makes a difference. He still didn't put two and two together. That has nothing to do with the activity itself, jogging. So what is he telling people to do? Just jog harder. He's not telling them, forget the jogging. There's too much risk with jogging. Just go focus on the muscle. Do safe weight training. He didn't make that leap. He didn't take that last leap. And that's the leap I want to try to get you to make. You want to improve your heart. You want to improve your endurance. Don't focus on an activity that's going to make your heart beat fast. There's a middleman between your heart and your activity. That middleman is muscle. And if you want to improve the function of your heart, if you want to improve your endurance, you need to focus on strengthening muscle and building muscle. The demands of muscle are going to place demands on the heart, it's going to be placing demands on all the other systems of your body, and they're going to improve as a result. And these studies are showing that. What I do is weight training that's very intense, but we lift weights very slowly to avoid the forces that can cause the injuries. The kinds of forces that you endure by doing jogging and long-term steady state activities. They're called overuse injuries. All right? And if you're not doing long steady state jogging, and, and you're not incurring those overuse injuries, then the next step that Dr. Cooper wants you to do is do high intensity cardio, which solves the intensity issue, but it still doesn't avoid the musculoskeletal problems. So you are saving some time, but you're still putting yourself at risk by doing wind sprints. You know, and come on, we're baby boomers. You know, wind sprints are the easiest way to pull a hamstring muscle, a groin muscle, or something like that, and you're out of commission. So in conclusion, once again, even though this was talk on aerobic conditioning, it comes back to what I do. Strength training, high intensity strength training, but safe high intensity strength training. What I'm doing here is not only strength training you in an intense manner to push all your energy systems and therefore improve your endurance, but I'm doing it in a manner that's not gonna set you up for injuries and knee replacements down the road. And the way we do that is by lifting weights extremely slowly. Because remember, force equals mass times acceleration. And if you have a lot of force, a lot of mass, and you're lifting it very quickly, that's a lot of force, and it's that force that causes the injuries. By, so by lifting weights very, very slowly, and reducing that force, but also by lifting weights slowly, you're increasing the intensity. Try to move something really slowly. Without momentum helping you, it gets hard fast. And if you can just hang in there and burn out that muscle through high intensity exercise in a safe manner by doing it slowly, and you work out the whole body, You've improved your endurance.
the end. Thank you very much.